Hey, what's going on guys? It's Cole here, and today I'm bringing you one of my favorite AR setups in Warzone 2 right now, and this is the STB 556 kitted out for low recoil and high damage range and bullet velocity. This is a setup that is going to absolutely fry people at close to medium range. At longer ranges, it's not as good as say like an M4 or an RPK is going to be, because the STB just isn't really meant for that range no matter how much we kit it out for it. But if you're someone who likes to run a bit of an SMG AR hybrid, and run like a sniper secondary or something like that, then this is going to be the perfect setup for you. And I know that this has been a really, really fun one for me. So with all that out of the way, I'm going to stop wasting your guys' time and let's get into the setup itself before playing a game or two with it and seeing how it goes. Alright, so before getting into a couple games, I'm just going to run through the class right here. Really, you can use any secondary that you want. I'm not running overkill, but you absolutely could if you want to run the perk package with it. I'm running a heartbeat and a throwing knife. The heartbeat might end up not being great if a lot of people are using ghost in this game, but so far from what I can tell not many people are, so as of right now this is a pretty good choice to run. For the perk package I'm running vanguard, mostly for the double time, the bomb squad, and the high alert. These three are all good, the resupply is not really doing much of anything, but it's there I guess for the throwing knife. But getting into the real meat and potatoes here with the STB itself, uh, first, I'm running the Harbinger D20 Suppressor. This thing gives you bullet velocity, damage range, recoil smoothness. It will take away from ADS speed, but what doesn't in this game? I have it tuned for recoil smoothness and bullet velocity. Personally, I went all the way on both, but you can play around with the tuning as you like, as it doesn't really make the biggest difference, but it's there. Next, I'm running the 24.4 inch Bruin S620 barrel. Again, damage range, bullet velocity. This actually gives you hip fire accuracy as well as recoil control. So I guess if someone really runs you down and you start hip firing, this might not be the worst thing to run. But overall, it really is for the damage range and the bullet velocity. The tuning on this one, I'm running recoil steadiness and damage range. Again, not really going towards the ADS speed or anything, but we will make up for that a little bit with a later tune. So don't worry about it if you think that the ADS speed is going to be too slow on this thing, because it's really not. For the underbarrel, I'm running the FTAC Ripper 56. Just gives more aiming idle stability, recoil stabilization, and hip fire accuracy. This is a surprisingly good setup if you are in a close quarters situation. A lot of that coming from the hip fire. It's actually why I'm not overkilling an SMG like I am on a lot of my other classes in Warzone right now. The optic is totally optional. You don't need to be running one. I'm running the SZ Holotherm. This thing not only gives you a solid optic, but it actually has the thermal target identification, meaning that it will highlight targets who are within any sort of reasonable range to you. And that obviously is so, so helpful. The only time that they won't be highlighted is either if it's through glass or if they're running cold-blooded. And I don't even know if cold-blooded is available in Warzone. I should actually go look. Okay, so cold-blooded is on the Sentinel package, but considering how good the base perks are and how terrible the ultimate and the cold-blooded are, I don't think people will really be running this. I haven't run into anyone using cold-blooded while I've been using this setup, so for me, pretty much every target has been highlighted unless it's through glass. If you're hiding in a building or if you're trying to shoot someone through a window, just know that they're not going to highlight properly on the optic through glass. It's just an issue with the sight right now. But for tuning it, I did go towards ADS speed to make up for the losses we made earlier with our tuning, and I tuned it towards the far side of the scope position. For those who don't know, if you tune it far, it actually ends up giving you less visual recoil. The actual recoil is the same, but it looks like it's kicking less, which ultimately leads to it being easier to aim on your end. So I pretty much always recommend tuning your sight towards far whenever you have the option to. Again, you don't have to run this optic. You could definitely substitute in any other attachment you might want, but I think that this optic is really, really good on this setup. And lastly, I'm using the comb. This is the Bruin TS-30 comb. It just gives a little bit more recoil steadiness and aiming stability. And the tuning is towards aiming idle stability and recoil stabilization. Overall, this is just a super low recoil, super high damage STB build. This thing absolutely melts people. And I can't wait to show it to you in game. All right, so, so far I've been trying to drop at dome a lot just because I know the map from like Modern Warfare 3 and stuff. And it's right in the middle of the whole map, but actually I haven't been playing much Warzone yet. I've been mostly focused on multiplayer and DMZ so far. So I'm still trying to learn Almazra in general. I really like it, but it's just taken me some time to get it figured out. Hopefully that won't be a problem for us this game though. Hopefully I can just get some gameplay of the STB here. That works for me. Oh, he had a three plate and everything. Man, a large backpack and everything. Oh my god, that's so many slots. I don't even think that I've had one of these before. 
Alright, that stronghold's not super far away. I could definitely make it over there. Yeah, as long as no one starts this in the next minute or so, I can definitely make it over there real quick. Even if they do, I could just head in, kill them, and yoink it probably. Oh, it just turned red. Time to go in and yoink someone's stuff. Oh my god, what a jump. That was awesome. Oh my god, it's already cleared? No way. I could try to head to that one. That one's been red for a while. Oh, come on now. Alright, trying to get to the third stronghold of the game. The thing is, too, like, I could just go and buy a couple primaries if I wanted to. But I would way rather get, like, my perks and everything with it, you know? That was a player. I'm about to get beamed. 100% I'm about to get beamed. Or not. Okay. Sure. I'm kind of thinking out loud here, but I've been talking about this with friends recently, and all of us have kind of agreed that the vehicles in Warzone 2 are reminding us a lot of Blackout. Blackout just had way more vehicle play than Warzone ever did, and it's kind of brought all of us back to that time when, like, you would just load up in a chopper or on an armored boat or something in Blackout and rip it with the boys. Alright, someone just opened this stronghold. There's definitely going to be a little bit of competition here trying to get it. Bomb disposal. A charge was set in the stronghold. Oh, I got him. <laughs> no way I came in here, killed one guy and one bot, and that's all I had to do to get my loadout. I love this game. Yeah, that was a person. I didn't think it was. Holy shit. Durable gas mask? Don't mind if I do. You know, if I went to that black site, I could get an SMG for my secondary, like one of my loadout SMGs. I could get like my MP5 or something. But the thing is then, it would take the overkill perk set and I would lose my high alert. I really don't think I want to do that. I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I honestly have to make a couple loadouts that have like SMGs or snipers as primary so that I can just buy them out of the shops instead of getting whole separate loadouts for them. Changing up my perks. And I have so much money, I can't believe I haven't- What the fuck? I'm pissed that there was a guy just camping that bounty in the gas station. That's fucked up. Let's see, maybe I could win my gulag, get back in. Get a loadout. I mean, I have enough on me to where I could just buy the gun if I needed to, if I couldn't get, like, a full loadout. But I think we're late enough in the game that one is going to drop soon, so I don't know if it's really the biggest worry. It might be more worthwhile to just spend, like, 4k on a UAV than to spend 5k on the gun. Is it going to find me an opponent? I'm the only one in here, and I've got 17 seconds left before it just lets me loose. I honestly wouldn't mind. Like, I was sitting here ready to clutch up in the gulag, but if I just have to wait another 8 seconds and leave, then I'll do it. There is no one left to fight. Stand by for redeployment. Well, hey! I'm not gonna complain about it. Oh, and there's loadouts dropping in literally right now. Doesn't get much more perfect, but I know how this normally goes, so let's hope. Please don't have someone camping it. Please don't camp it. Please don't camp it. Ugh! Oh, I have to get a 3-plate vest again now. Shit. Man, there's like no contracts left either. I'm actually just gonna have to loot for one. Oh, self-res? I'll take that. That's something. Obviously, if I could find like a shotgun, a sniper, an SMG, just something as a secondary that's not my pistol, then that would be huge as well. There's an ammo box up here, so I definitely gotta run to try to grab that. What the hell? Oh, come on! What? Okay, there we go. Nearest buy station is way over there, too. I don't know how much a three-plate vest would cost me, but I'll definitely want to go and buy one if I can. Anyone camping this gas station? No? Okay. Yeah, I really do like the map in this game, but I just have to get used to it. Like, I still have no idea where I am right now. I don't know what other locations are near me. I'm just pretty lost on the map as it is right now. Which, of course, is just a thing that the more time I put in, the more I learn it. But... So far, I've been really enjoying the map. Oh, can you not buy a three-plate vest? Oh, fuck. I'll buy the UAV then. That's a problem. Ignore the aim. Oh my god, he's gonna fry me? Oh, that wasn't even him. This guy camping the rooftop, dude. Are you kidding me? Is this what solos are like in Warzone 2? I didn't think it would be so campy, but holy. 
With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry I couldn't get more clips of this loadout in action, but I've been super, super busy trying to cram in a bunch of work before going out of town for some family stuff for a few days. So I tried to get this out as best as I could with the time that I had. If you guys enjoyed the video, you enjoyed the setup, you found it helpful, whatever it might be, feel free to go ahead and leave a like, a comment, or a subscription, anything to let me know and the YouTube algorithm know that you found this video helpful. I would really, really appreciate it. It means the world to me. And with all that being said, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching the video, and goodbye.